right. Happy Thanksgiving week. To meet yours? Um, to meet yours. <laughs> it's a good name, isn't it? That's in honor of the fact that um, apparently I have a lot of young uh, Hispanic podcast listeners. I'm very excited about that. And I completely need one of them to um, arrive in this driveway to teach me how to speak Spanish. <laughs> or at least how to pronounce, um, what's the term? I just made that up, termitios. Probably not. No. Um, probably termites. Anyway, I was informed uh, by some people that I was holding the wand wrong. By all the people. By all the people. Well, you know, I saw Harry Potter. I didn't mean to. I was... Um, <laughs> I, cause my cousin Mary's four boys were like chomping at the bit to go. And I said, okay, it was years ago. And I said, fine, let's go. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, but I do used to do a joke of my act where they, cause they'd all read the books mm -hmm. and they were like, well, we thought the books were a whole lot better. I'm like, well, that's what you get for reading. <laughs> that's what you get for reading. You book learning bullshit. I never read the book. I thought the movie was just fine. Um, I think the wand has more power though with the heavy part on the end. Like if you're gonna bash somebody in the head, oh, I but I guess you don't have to if you if you have powers. Yeah, you don't have to yeah. actually physically hurt anybody. Well, but you're covering up all the jewels then. Right. You're holding the rock. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, um, there you have it. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Whack -a -mole. It's a good one. <laughs> uh, so many things, termites. If you are you driving somewhere, you know what? Even the even if traffic's bad. It's better than being at the airport. Uh, yeah, because I was flying this past week, and it's already getting out of hand. I'm also starting to believe that no one sends their children to school their children to school anymore. No. No. There are kids in the airport every week. Every it's not just summer anymore. No, and I just look at them and go, aren't you supposed to be at school? Right. Does nobody take attendance <laughs> anymore? Like at a Catholic school, if we weren't there one day, they needed a reason. Right. They'd call your mom and dad. Like, I don't want to sound 700 years old, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're homeschoolers, but they've all got some money. They're all flying around. Um, I think their parents do. Well, right, their parents have they the money, have but money. then they get to the age where they realize that's their money. <laughs> I've seen it happen in my own family. Um, before we get to business, well, any business, um, before we get to our new king, because we have opened the court, just letting you know these things are on the website, all old CDs. <laughs> these are rare, the, in other words. Yeah. Yeah, and I priced them the same, I think. DVDs, this one's already sold out. There were only like 10 made. It's just a club set in Denver, but it's fun. This one has, I think, has the Masters joke on it. Yeah. And then the cassette. Oh, the Madigan. This one's limited. Look, and it's it says uh, on the front, as seen on Showtime. <laughs> Kathleen Madigan, as seen on Showtime. And then I had to make a clean one for Walmart. <laughs> I did. I had to make a whole CD Stop. where they bleeped out any cuss words. I don't even cuss that much. I cuss like I cuss in real life, right. like like an adult mm -hmm. cusses, an adult Catholic cusses. Right. And, um, yeah, this one is not – I don't know if this – it says if it's not the clean one, it says explicit. I mean, the worst thing I said was shit or something. Mm -hmm. And here's a cassette. That's just a collector's item. I know nobody's going to want to probably have a place it's to a play. It's picture. But is it, it's my Tiffany at the mall photo. I call it my Tiff 80s. 90s. It's 1989. 90s. Yeah, it is 1989. Um, Taylor's was a little more popular than mine. <laughs> just a little bit. Um, so all of this is on the website. If you guys want it, go get it. CDs, DVDs. I didn't know anybody would want any of it. And I just have boxes. And then There's every no time more. one of my siblings move, they ship a box back that somehow I had in their house for some reason. <laughs> and then I'm like, God damn it. What am I supposed to do with all this? Um, all right, let's get that off the table. Uh, with the little cassette. I do like the cassette, though. I'm going to take the football. I'm going to put the cassette right here. Your broccoli hair. Yeah, my broccoli, well, my mushroom. I call it my atomic cloud. <laughs> it's, my, it's my atomic cloud hair. It was just short enough and permed. Boom. <laughs> Welcome to the 80s. <laughs> Early 90s. Um, we have opened up the court. Show us the shirt. Oh, the shirt. I was going to do that. So the shirt came, and they went out so fast, there's smalls and mediums left. Yep. But there's other shirts on the website. But this is the Christmas one. See, it's got, uh, thank you to Greg. Um, it's got the Loch Ness Monster, Santa, Bigfoot, and an alien. And then on the front, it's got, and it's a wonderful light gray. It's super cool. And they're all soft. Yeah. I love it when people wear them to the shows. It always makes me happy to see people wearing them out in public because yeah. they're not just sleep shirts. They're but they're soft enough for both. 
<laughs> Somebody should do that as an ad. So who is welcome? There's a lot of thought. There were a lot of suggestions. Yeah. There's going to be a couple more people added, too, to the court. Yep. Um, my friend Bob and Clark, they had some good suggestions. And one, I think, is going to be a queen for the children. Cheers. For the children. She's on order. <laughs> I had to look her up. <laughs> I had to go Wikipedia, and I'm like, oh, oh, and I'm reading her whole resume like somebody's grandma. That's so wonderful you did all those things. That's just amazing. Anyway, welcome to the court jelly roll. Hey. Now, the biggest reason we are knighting him, kinging him, mm -hmm. we're going to king him like in a chest, is because of his charity work. Yeah. Yes, but he's also one of my favorite new singers. Mm -hmm. And they say country, people could argue that. It's like, he's all over the place. It's rap, it's country, it's Southern rock. It's, his voice is great. He's the nicest man. I met him. I would call him a, I would call him a friend. Mm -hmm. Like, would I pick up the phone and call him? Maybe if I needed something. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. But um, he's just so nice. Yeah. And his uh, wife, Bunny, mm -hmm. used to be an escort. He used to be a drug dealer. He's like, now we're on red carpets. It's the American story. <laughs> you gotta, you got, you know, people judge. Oh, he used to be, he's got tattoos all over. I'm like, yeah, well, look where he started. Yeah, yeah you would have tattoos all over you, too. His mom was an addict. Here's a little information about Jelly Roll, and you should go listen if you're in the car. Just download some, Save Me is a good one. Um, I Need need a Favor. Yeah. That's one of my favorite ones. Mm -hmm. Who am I, who am I, who am I to ask for a favor? I only pray to God when I need a favor. And he's right. He's, he's a very smart writer. Yeah. I love his lyrics. His real name is Jason Bradley DeFord. He was born December 4th, 1984, in Antioch, Tennessee, right which is right. only about five miles from where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. um, his father was a meat salesman and worked as a bookie. His mother was a mentally ill addict. Now, yeah. it's very sad. Yep. She did get her shit together later in life, I believe. The documentary is on one of the things. Netflix. Can we Google that? I'll see what the Netflix. It's on Netflix? Yeah, we'll put Go watch that. You'll really... Um, he was in and out of uh, jail. He sold mixtape. Oh, this is the thing. But first, he was in and out of juvenile detention centers a lot. And that's in Nashville. He goes like every week to the uh, yeah. the juvenile detention center and yeah. then gives them guitars and all this nice stuff. Uh, before his transition to country music, he launched a career in hip hop after being inspired by rappers such as 3 Six Mafia, 8 Ball, and MGJG, all three of whom I know nothing about. <laughs> he sold mixtapes out of his car, starting with a string of releases, blah, blah, blah. He probably uh, had the same hair you do when you're He probably, well, he's had a mullet now for a while, then he cut it. He's trying to look sharp, I think. Somebody said he's lost a bunch of weight. I don't know. Uh, hopefully that's the case. Um, he made his Grand Old Opera debut in 2020, 2021. He was invited by country singer Craig Morgan to join him. Yeah, that's nice. He sold out Nash, and then it went all the way. He sold out the Bridgestone, and right down the street. He's always crying because he's so happy. Yeah, uh, he's always crying. He's married to Alyssa DeFord, aka Bunny. He was nobody, and she was like, "That's fine." Uh, she, he, like, he's like, she looked at me like a painting, like a blank canvas, which he really appreciated. And he had a kid, and she yeah. said, "Okay, I'll raise your kid too." So ch chalk one up for the escorts, you know. Oh. Mm hmm. Doing the right thing. Um, she, I guess, has a podcast and also. He earned his GED at age 23 while he was in jail. Good man. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are his Grammy Awards. Um, his, uh, he was on the CMAs not long ago. Well, we talked about that with Winona. I don't know yeah. what the hell went around there. <laughs> um, he had, um, just recently in 2023, he teamed up um, with Live Nation to donate a dollar um, for tickets, any ticket bought to his show to charity. As a result, he raised a staggering $590,000 for at youth That's fantastic. Uh, risk at youth or at youth risk at at risk youth. Right. Cool. Um, they gave one dollar to charity. He also did a toy drive here at a Walmart mm -hmm. in a parking lot. If you bought a toy, you could just come in the parking lot, and he did like a real concert. That's awesome. Yeah, because he said really there awesome. were times when he didn't get a toy. Oh. Let's like see. It. It's the biggest toy drive in Nashville history. And he said his philanthropy has just, be just begun. And when he's out on the road, I don't know if it said this, but I don't know how he has the energy. Um, 
he, he went over to 50 cities and he goes to the juvenile detention center in those places. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, just finished 80 shows, 80 days, averaging five shows a week, three national TV appearances in the middle of it, visit over 20 jails or juveniles and four rehabs and a few homeless shel- shelters. That's awesome. So, I know, I wish he put out a new album. The toy drive. So there you go. Go look at Jolly Roll. Go watch the documentary. Welcome to the court. Round of applause. Jolly Roll. Really? Jason DeFord is his real name, if anybody cares. All right, moving on. What are we eating and drinking? Where were we at? Where were, where are we going? Do we have any more Queen news? Oh, the Queen news, right. Yeah, I'm so scared. Yes. Well, I was just saying welcome to him. Okay. And then um, Dolly. Is this Dolly? Yes. Dolly. I went and saw the movie Rockstar. It's great. If, uh, you if you if you haven't seen, I here there was only one glitch, and it's uh-huh. not Dolly's fault. So in the theater, mm-hmm. the Dolby sound is, boom, 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 you know, mm-hmm. like that. Yep. And then when her movie came on, the sound it almost went to like mono. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. Mm-hmm. Either they didn't film it in that, mm-hmm. or somebody went to Sleepy Town up in the thing <laughs> and forgot to hit the switch. Like mm-hmm. all go. But it was super fun. Yeah. It was a fun, it's, it, it was super fun to people see. People dressed up, it was cool. Yeah, people were, they was all full. Everybody was excited. Um, it's just fun to see what she's doing and then to see all those famous people. Stevie's in it. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> um, and then Dolly was at the Tennessee college game where yeah. they played Missouri and Missouri kicked their ass. Wow, woo uh, Missouri won. She but at, she's she saying. Oh, was she at the Georgia game? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we beat them the week before. We yeah. beat Tennessee. Yeah, the Georgia Bulldogs, who then <laughs> proceeded to kill Tennessee. So totally. Peyton Manning walked Dolly out. It was like the king and queen of all of Knoxville. Mm-hmm. And Dolly sang Rocky Top. And then, yeah, that was great because she's such a pro. She could sing it even though the sound was wacko. Mm-hmm. Everything was just uh, wack-a-dack-a-doodle. Um, she's great. And then her, um, she's just... Doing her album everywhere. It's a Dollar General. It's a she got a deal with Cracker Barrel. It's all video. it's all going on. Rock yeah, I went to Cracker Barrel. Mm-hmm. Um, I met Lil Dorf, and um, there was the rocking chair. I was nice. like, I'll be damned. There it is for sure. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, shares are running around singing that Christmas song everywhere. <laughs> she did something about she opened. She did it on the Rockefeller Center tree deal. Mm-hmm. Um, Stevie's out on the road doing her thing. <laughs> little, little Anita just tore it up in Greensboro, North Carolina. Nice. I saw a lot of the reviews. Uh, Crushing it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, Tanya's over in the corner there. Tanya, I decided out of all the kings and queens, well, Jelly Roll and Tanya would be the two that would have went to Gatorland yes. with me. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Stevie wouldn't understand it. No. What are they doing with all these alligators? <laughs> I can't see Cher being very interested. And I think Dolly would be like, that's how cute y'all got some animals and reptiles. And then she'd leave. <laughs> Tay-Tay. Huge tay a Big Tay-Tay. Oh, my God. That kid dying in Brazil was the worst. Bullshit, you don't have any water. Right. And then you won't let them bring their own water bottles in. Mm-hmm. You know what Tay-Tay should do? Mm-hmm. Make a water bottle that is like foam mm-hmm. or something soft. I think they're afraid people will throw them. Maybe. Or what's in your water? Is it really, is it vodka? Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. I could, so okay, I get it, you can't bring your own sure, in. Sure, but there should have been, if it's 100 something degrees, mm-hmm. what's her face? They have videos of her panting on stage. Tay-Tay can't even breathe. No. And then, I mean, that's tragic. And then she had to skip the show. I mean, not had to, but she just was like, okay, we're just going to postpone the show because this, the next one, because this is all fucked up. And yeah, I, if I was the parents, I mean, this is daughter of a lawyer. I would sue the, the, uh, the stadium. Are they? The promoter, somebody. Dorf, did you hear that? Little Dorfman, <laughs> promoter, little Dorfman. Make sure the areas are safe for the fans. <laughs> I, yeah, it was, that was a sad story. And then she had to miss Monday Night Football. I mean, not that that's, the lady's no. death is obviously way worse. But she was going to go up, but it's a good thing she didn't go to the Chiefs game because if they did not win, my little Kansas City Chiefs ate shit to the mm-hmm. Eagles. But also, Travis dropped a lot of balls, and maybe it's because she wasn't there. Yeah, he's sad. But we also can't have your career depending on, depending <laughs> upon, not when you're in my fantasy league. I don't care who you're in love with. 
I don't care who you're in lust with. You get your ass to practice, and you catch the ball for Smalls. That's my team, S-M-A-L-L-Z, Smalls. I still beat Lewis by two points. Yay! Lewis is currently on vacation somewhere in, in wherever, and um, he's going to get the text today. It's just a, it's a picture. It's a screenshot on your fantasy app that says, you won, good job, coach, and it's Tom Brady in a Knights outfit. Nice. He's my, yeah, he's who I chose as my thing. And the, the, you won by two points over Lewis Black <laughs> with no help from Travis Kelsey. Uh-huh. It was a, just, just a rainy night. Sad time. Yeah, I know a much, bunch of people that went to the game in Kansas City. It was like 40 and rainy, and I'm like, that's where I become a giant pansy. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, uh-uh. Nope. I can't. I could sit there if it was 60 Cold. and rainy, but 40? Shoo. Mm-mm. Well, Canadians, you guys, to you guys, that's like 65. You're sitting out there. Well, and also the people of Cleveland, if you go on Barstool Sports, Mm -hmm. there's a fat man um, (laughs) in the Cleveland uh, Stadium. Yeah, and it was freezing in Cleveland, but he has his shirt is completely off. He's got some tattoos on his arm. He is out. I mean, (laughs) sleeping in the middle of a stadium of, what, 70,000 people, Mm -hmm. and he's just snoring, and he's wobbling back and forth, and the guy next to him is like, this is my good luck charm. Like, yeah. He's got a new quarterback. Um, And then Tay-Tay, so her welcome to Brazil before things got weird is Christ the Redeemer. They did a projection. So cool. Well, first I saw it, and I thought, how do they make a shirt that big? Yeah, he's huge. I really did. I really thought someone made that shirt. Mm -hmm. It's a projection, but that was her welcome to Brazil, and I'm sure all those kids were excited. And it's from the "You Belong with Me" video. The "You Belong with Me" video, Hello. which I've never seen. Oh, um, in the yeah, we'll put it in the show notes for you, Tay Tay people. Um, Great. I had that little article about it, and I have already lost it. Sorry, Paddle. Oh no, here it is. <laughs> yeah, I printed that off. Rio's Christ the Redeemer welcomes Taylor Swift to Brazil with Junior Jewels. T-shirt. See the photo. We did it, Swifties, reads a statement on the Landmark's (laughs) official Instagram. (laughs) The power of Swift compels you. The power of Swift compels you. Remember that from The Exorcist? (laughs) The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ. We said that in my house for like a decade after that. Yeah, when people were acting like assholes or something, we would just go after them and go, the power of Christ compels you. Um, After countless fans mobilized online to have Rio de Janeiro's Christ Redeemer welcome Taylor Smith, uh, era's tour with a temporary maker make over the famous statue now sports a t-shirt inspired by the pop stars iconic you belong with me music video outfit and all in all thanks to the holy spirit of swifties That's great. his arms spread wide open in welcome only as stevie <laughs> nick says it <laughs> welcome yeah. the giant stone replica of jesus christ is currently adorned with a light projection of a white shirt made to look like homemade junior jewels t Swift wears in her 2009 video, which has been viewed over 1.5 billion times on YouTube. Wow. This That's is why I'm fantastic. into this. I, I know why I'm not the biggest Tay-Tay at all by a million fan on earth. I'm not against her. I just never was a Swifty. I'm about the phenomenon of it. That's Thank why you. I'm in, because mm-hmm. I can't believe it. No. The power she has, the power of Swifty, is... She might think of do something else to do with it. I don't know. I wouldn't want that responsibility. Mm-hmm. No. She's going to get the Chiefs a Super Bowl. Mm. Again, she's got to fix all this. Well, I don't know if the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl. I'd still bet on them. Yes. But I'd also bet on San Francisco. Don't say that. Why? Because the, the Chiefs 40, are your team. Well, I'm just saying the San Francisco 49ers are really good, and they can't be it, – it, somebody's got to play the Chiefs. I mean, it's AFC, NFC. <laughs> NFC, I think the 49ers are going to come out on top. Although the Eagles prove me wrong all the time. Like They're last, solid. Like last night. And my friend Dory is all into the Eagles, so <laughs> there you go, Dory. Shout out. She's probably not listening. <laughs> she has a job in children. Um, so that's what they did. Wow. It's a 98-foot statue. I thought it was taller. No. Christ the Redeemer. She's also leading the finalist at the. She's the leading finalist at the 2023 Billboard Music Awards with nods in 20 categories. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So there you go, Swifties. You're doing it. 
Um, moving on. So it was a great weekend, um, at the villages. Uh, I, so many things. Well, I didn't even do, I should be doing what I'm tasting, drinking. I'm drinking a beer from Florida. I'm not sure where I got, I mean, I know where I got it, but I'm not, oh, it came backstage. Oh, okay. Well, who brought this? Um, it's a Florida orange IPA. Oh, Amanda brought it. And Amanda also backstage at this, at the. Um, brought me a Stevie Nicks doll. So great. Look, it's my first one. It's so I had great. no Barbie, and I got in lines for him, and I never got one. No. Nope. Do you want me to read just a bit of the back in Stevie's voice? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Do it. It's the only bonus to all my smoking all these years. I can actually <laughs> sign like I'm going to open it next week. I didn't want to get into it all now. It's very complicated, and I don't She's got a tambourine. We'll get into it next <laughs> week. My life is a testament to believing that if you want something, you can make it happen. Stevie. And then it says, Barbie honors the iconic queen of rock and roll. Early in her career, Nix achieved worldwide success with the band Fleetwood Mac, getting critical acclaim for her songwriting skills on the 1975 hit, on the 1975 hit Rhiannon, and praise for her captivating stage presence. After the mega success of the band with albums like Rumors, she embarked on a hugely successful solo career, topping the charts and reaching multi-platinum status. <laughs> This doll is inspired by the legendary 1977 Rumors album and captures her iconic style of mystery and ethereality. I didn't oh. know that was a word. Ethereality. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the Rumors album, though, the one where she's got the black flowy mm -hmm. dress. So thank you. That was so nice. I know these aren't cheap. You were and, at the concert. And they were, I was at the concert where she unveiled it, and then yeah. I tried to get online and get in lines, and nobody wanted to have anything to do with it. I couldn't get one. Amanda secured one somehow. Um, I got flowers from Brian and Sue. Thank you. Um, then this, Amanda also brought these. These are Pringles that are pap uh, paprika. They're from Iceland. From Iceland. Oh, Iceland's having a shit show right now at that yeah. volcano. It's crazy. All those people left. I don't know where 3,000 people are supposed to go. I don't know. Oh, my God. Nope. Something to do in Iceland. <laughs> yeah. If you're bored. Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, no. Do you like paprika? I don't even know what paprika is. <laughs> How would I know if I would like it? No, the answer is no, I don't like it. Amanda, I love the doll. Those it's chips. Like, it's the red stuff they put on deviled oh. eggs. Oh. You love deviled eggs. The red eggs. stuff they put. I do love deviled eggs, but like my Aunt Peggy's in charge of that. She only puts a little bit on there. It's for decoration. You can't taste it. I never knew what that is. Is that what that is? Paprika? paprika? <laughs> I thought it was like a garnish. Oh, um, well, secretly, I just kind of rub it off the top when I see it anyway. Maybe that's why I've never tasted it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mm. More Florida orange IPA. The Florida orange IPA is great. Oh, my God. Um, Dottie, Gail, Wander, and Jennifer brought some uh, beer and box wine and a few Christmas ornaments. Nice. Thank you. Nancy painted a rock. This made me laugh so hard. So this is a rock, and it said, post on Facebook. Dunlow Rocks N.D. It's a painted rock. <laughs> this is at the Villages, <laughs> right? Hello. I like it. This is the note. <laughs> oh, it's her t son's 27th birthday. Oh, November 17th. I'm already thanking you for the laughs. I made you this painted rock for a club I'm in. We hide them for people to find. Yes, it's lame, but it's retirement. <laughs> 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 Love, Nancy. <laughs> Well, Nancy, it made me laugh, so totally worth it. Excellent. There's just old people running around the villages looking for rocks. But wouldn't it be, it's like Easter eggs. If you found one, you'd get excited. Totally I would. Mm -hmm. yep. It's a fun little game. <laughs> Shit, my friend Drew and his wife Amy do it with fake things. Yeah. What's that called? Geocaching. Ge Geocaching? Yeah. I have never been in a car with two more psychos. I'm like, get the <laughs> fuck out of this car. It's a rainstorm. He's like, all right, Maddie, can you pull over? Can you pull over? I go, why? <laughs> There's a, like an abandoned Baptist church. He goes, Palmer, I got a geocache. He gets out of the car and runs into the woods. This is a 60-something-year-old man. I'm like, Drew, what are you doing? He's like, uh, you know, Amy and I are into this, man. It's super fun on the road. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. I will not say their last names to, to hide their identity. No. <laughs> um, and the show was great, and then we had to reschedule the Saturday show, so that'll just stuff came up, but that'll be on uh, Monday the 4th. Great. So I'll be Separate. back. And yeah. I got to go to Gatorland. And let me tell you, 
I just, I, so I had talked about them on the podcast. I never get any, like, I don't go to, uh, whatever VIP parties or red carpets. I mean, I'll go in Nashville if it's a music thing, cause it's got nothing to do with me. And then I could just watch and have fun. And there's no weirdness. Um, if Dorf goes, then I could go anywhere nice. and it's just fine. It's not weird. Um, but this podcast, the, the benefits of all the people I've met mm-hmm. and the fun I've had with it, but every once in a while, something shocking comes out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Um, and my publicist, Katie, who's very, very nice. She, like, she'll always go, do you want to do this? You want to do that? I'm like, no, Katie, you know I don't want to do that. You know the answer to these, Katie, but thank you for going. But she's like, um, I got an email from Gatorland. And she, but she, she's from Florida. Uh-huh. I go, Katie, you know Gatorland. She's like, I do. And she's like, well, they just wanted to give you a little backstage tour if you want when you're, because I already go anyway. Right. I stand in line. Pay my thirty-seven fifty. Mm-hmm. Make whoever's the opening act this week. It was Micro Som- Somerville, the Beer Monster. Um, well, I don't make them go, but I say I'm going. Would you like to go? And I really could go alone. It's it's so entertaining. Um, I could go by myself. And uh, so it was. Uh, Brandon is in charge of all the alligators. Well, he's in charge of a lot of the animals. I got he's to go. All the animals. Yeah. Um, back where the al- the alligators have an enormous pond. That's why sometimes when people go. Well, is this nice for them? They, they, you couldn't find a bigger pond on a golf course. Nope. I mean, it is awesome what's in there for these animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they rescue animals that have gotten hurt, and then they take care of them that can't survive in the wild. So I don't want to get into those discussions about, you know, well, they shouldn't do that. Whatever. It's there. I love it. Right. And I got to go in a cage, well, a big giant, I shouldn't call it a cage. It was a giant enclosed area mm-hmm. with a serval. It was the nicest thing ever. Now I want a circle. I mean, I'm not getting one. I'm not, I'm not you getting one. I'm not. I know. It's so tall and skinny. It looks like a mini cheetah, <laughs> except it has lines instead of spots. You can't have a circle. And there were two bobcats in there. And in my life, I've seen a bunch of bobcats in Missouri and Tennessee. And in my heart, I always think, I bet they're just as friendly as a house cat. <laughs> and these two were. Now I know that's not the case out in the wild. They're like, yeah. <laughs> but, oh my God, it let me pet them. It was just the greatest day, road day ever. And you're like, you know, I've been doing this a really long time. Every once in a while, a perk is nice. Yeah. They were excited to meet me. I was excited to meet them. Yep. Um, I had a breakfast beer. Nice. Um, yep. Jen was like, do you want a beer by any chance? I'm like, yes, I've been waiting for you to ask. Um, and they even gave me souvenirs on the way out. The, the Brandon knew everything about the animals. He can make the alligators. And they live. They are living in the wild. They're That's an awesome. enormous, I can't even tell you where the beginning is. I wouldn't call it a lake. Well, maybe a mini lake or an enormous pond. Oh, cool. So, yeah, they feed them chicken every day, but they don't even have to. There's there's turtles. They, they eat on their own. Nice. It's just a wonderful... I saw the snakes. I don't want to touch the snakes. No, 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 I don't want anything to do with the snakes. But it was just a wonderful, wonderful place. That's great. Yeah, so if you're ever in Orlando, and you don't want to go to Disneyland, world, world, it's a world. I know. Um, you know, get on over to Gatorland. It's awesome. And if you get there early, it opens at uh, uh, 10. Mm-hmm. Do you get there right about 10? Well, there's hardly ever a line. No. I mean, and it's, it's there's scary. field trips. The kids are happy. This is a great place. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Oh, I didn't say I'm tasting these. These are for the Philly game last night. I opened these. They're called Wizwit. It's with the Philly cheesesteak. Uh-huh. Of you say Wizwit. Uh-huh. That means the cheese. They're so. Do you want cheese whiz on it? Right. Right. They're so good. These chips. They're hers. You ate H e r r s. Well, they're delicious. <laughs> I'll stop eating. I'm coming. Well, just one more. <laughs> I haven't had breakfast. <laughs> All right. Um, congratulations to the Eagles. Well, good defense, and it was nice to see Jason Kelsey, the other brother, get a win. He's adorable. Against his younger brother. I love Yep, and if you watch the shows about them, it's so clear, older brother, younger brother, because Jason's pretty serious, gets the job done, then yeah. goes home like a normal person. Travis is out at a rodeo dancing the song. He's a good goofball. <laughs> I like him. I do, too. He's super fun, but you're like, that is the leisure leisure world of the not the oldest born. No. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to do this, too. I'm tasting alligator with beef and, beef and pork. Um it's a Slim Jim. An alligator Slim Jim. 
Yeah. I don't no. like it. Oh, wow. Spit that out. Yeah. No yeah. offense. Yeah. I've eaten alligator before. And none of your friends, so it's, you know. Yeah. The gators. I'll stick with the Slim Jims, the yeah. real ones. What's the big gator name that you told me about? Well, there's a huge, the biggest gator in the pond, his name is Buddy. Buddy? Yeah, and he comes when Brandon calls him. He's like, Buddy! <laughs> I mean, you just see this enormous log swimming your way. I'm like, holy drip. Is that really him? He's like, yeah, you'll know. Because he's missing, missing like a bunch of teeth over here. And sure enough, that was one. Then there's one without, somehow lost a boat prop, they think. Um, oh, and I got to see Jolene. Yes. Um, Jolene's still being taken care of and not available to the general public. I just got to look at her from a distance, but she's doing wonderful. Great. Yeah, she's missing the whole half stop of her snout. They think it was a boat prop. Because the the um the line is really sharp, Seriously. it's not like another alligator ate it, right. which they will do. Really? Oh yeah, they're oh. cannibals. Wow. Is it a cannibal if you eat your own if you're an alligator? Is that just for people? You know See all the shit I don't know at this age. I could live another twenty yeah. lifetimes. Let's call Brandon. He'll know. <laughs> Brandon will totally know. Um, <laughs> I know Brandon knew everything, <laughs> but he was cool too. He was like a a cool nerd. If you like an animal nerd, like my friend Kevin. Yeah. Um, who's we a need, vet? We need those people. We absolutely do need these people. Update! <laughs> More pandas will be coming to the United States of America. Yes. It's not over. It's and you know, over. whether you like Joe Biden or not, we're not going to get into all that, but it did happen on his last trip over there to China. Oh. Uh huh. Maybe Jill said something at the uh, the cocktail meet and greet. <laughs> Chinese President Xi, I don't know how you really say it. She. Xi Jinping yeah. signaled that China will send new pandas to the United States, calling them the envoys of friendship between the Chinese and American people. Nice. Listen to him. Hold on. I'm going to tell you where they're going to be, though. Okay. Change of residence. We're ready to continue our cooperation with the United States on the panda conversation and do our best to meet the wishes of California's as to deeply deepen the friendly ties between our two people, he said during a dinner speech with business leaders. The gesture came at the end of the day, in which he and Joe Biden held their first face-to-face -face meeting in a year and pledged to try to reduce tensions. He did not share additional details on where the pandas might be provided, but appeared to suggest that the next pair of pandas are most likely to come to California, probably San Diego. Oh. That would be good for them, though. Yeah. I think Same nice. temperature. Have I don't know. Google it. I think they do too. Atlanta still has a couple. They are losing. Mm -hmm. Um, so good for that. You know, I don't know what else Joe may or may have not accomplished on his little trip, but we're getting some more pandas. At yeah, least we we've, we've been promised. The promise yeah. For pandas. And at least in San Diego, they'll be cool all the time. Because right. I feel like they do live in cold climates. You see them in snow a lot. But I feel like the heat in D.C., I don't know, it might be too much. So Who, nobody can complain about the temperature in um, San, San Diego. Diego. No. Not even a panda. No. There are so many funny videos of pandas falling off shit, like on, on uh, TikTok and stuff. Mm -hmm. And people are like, how do they survive in the wild? And then you just <laughs> see one falling out of a tree. Like, they're the most uncoordinated animal they're that so you've fun. ever... Yeah, they're super fun, but it's like, wow, you are an easy target. You're just a fat ass that falls down all the time. Totally. Mm. <laughs> Update! Oh Update. Colombia starts sterilizing the hippos. Pablo Escobar's hippos! Oh, no. Hippos kill more people on the planet than anything. Really? Google that. I think it's right. Just they do hip or hippo. I think they do. Yeah. Colombia on Tuesday began, this, began the sterilization of hippopotamuses, descendants of animals illegally brought to the country by the late drug pin, kingpin Pablo Escobar in the 80s. You're right. They kill more people than anything on earth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. My friends Drew and Amy went on a safari once. How'd that go? Well, Amy talks a lot, which I'm into, but a lot of people aren't. And there was a picture of just her and Drew on, on like one of those, um, what do you, uh, like an open Jeep thing. Yeah. But it should it, it should have had like 20 people on it. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, there were other people on there. And they... <laughs> <laughs> they jumped into the hippo yeah. pond <laughs> because Amy wouldn't stop talking. Oh, my God, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, They're going to sterilize 40 a year and transfer some to other co countries yeah. and po possibly um, kill funny. some of them. They're, they have no natural predators, and they've been declared an invasive species. Yeah, they are. Uh -huh. He only brought a few over, and now there's uh, hundreds of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a big thing. It was part of his private zoo. Why do all multimillionaires, crazy people, have to have a private zoo? Uh, what's his face? Hearst, the Hearst Castle. Yes, if yes, you go yes, up the yes. California coast and go to the Hearst Castle, they're like, oh, this is where he kept his lion. Right. Like, it's just freak shit. Michael Jackson had to have all the weird shit. There comes a point where you're so bored you wake up in the morning, you have no thoughts. Like, oh. shit, I forgot to pay um, the electric bill. The light bill. Shit, I'm meeting the gas guy because the grill's fucked up and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> These are the thoughts I wake up with. Like, okay, crap, I got to book a different <laughs> ticket to Seattle. Uh -huh. They wake up and go, you know what? I need a cougar. <laughs> like, what? How? you? So that's where you need an intervention. Yes. But he, I think Pablo also did it because he wanted to throw people mm -hmm. to him, to them. And they'll eat, they eat all the bones. They're better than pigs as far oh, as right. destroying a body. Mm -hmm. They'll eat everything. Um, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched every drug movie ever on, on Netflix. Um, wow. There's 169 hippos in Colombia, especially in the Magdalena River Basin. If no measures are taken, there could be 1,000 by 2035. Oh, my God. Each sterilization is about ten grand. Well, it's ten worth it, grand. guys. Oh yeah, but yeah, they come on. You got your Colombian money. Let's let's take care of that. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Update: Shakira, Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> your, her hips don't lie, but her tax returns do. Oh, wow, nice. wow. Who wrote that? <laughs> After having maintained her innocence for nearly five years, pop star Shakira struck a last-minute deal to avoid the risk of going to prison on the opening day of her tax fraud child in Barca tax fraud trial in Barcelona, Barcelona on Monday. Shakira told the presiding magistrate, Jose Manuel de Amo, that she accepted the agreement and reached with prosecutors. She said yes to confirm her acknowledgement of six counts of failing to pay the Spanish government 14 million euros, which is 15 million, almost 16 million dollars in taxes between 2012 and 2014. Under the deal, Shakira, who was it, Wycliffe Jean? Shakira, Shakira, Shakira. Shakira, Shakira. Um, she's going to receive a suspended three year sen sentence oh. and a fine of 7.6 million, but she has to pay the money back too. Right. She better get out on the road. What else does she do for money besides shows out loud? Uh, shows out loud. Shows out loud on the road. You mean live? Live. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, wait, are you doing a show out loud? I am doing an out loud show. <laughs> the trial, which would have included more than 100 witnesses over the following weeks, was instead called off after just eight minutes. Prosecutors said they were going to seek a prison sentence of eight years and two months and a fine of $26 million oh for the singer who won fans over with her hits in Spanish and English in different genres. She, 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 well, how much is she worth? Let's see, see if they say how much she's okay. worth. It's always lying. But. She said she's still innocent, but she wanted to put up a fight, but she had to put her family career and peace of mind first. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. How much is she worth? 400 million. 400 million? Mm -hmm. And I only know one song? <laughs> what is the matter with me? Hang on, the most Googled thing. Why is she so rich? <laughs> yeah, well, okay, the most Google thing is, that's what I would Google. Why is she so rich? Oh, this sounds good. <laughs> she made bank off music. <laughs> she made bank off music. Um, that's not a real answer. She sold her catalog. Oh, she sold her catalog? Yeah, we got to get into that. Well, I'm going to have to listen to some in the car on my big drive. Mm -hmm. um, that's so funny. Taylor Swift's net worth is worth as of this weekend. Tay Tay. 1.1 billion for Tay Tay? Good girl. Well, she's by far the richest queen. Yeah. 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 Well, Dolly's. Oh, right. Yeah. See what Dolly's <laughs> worth is. Yeah. If you count Dolly's hotels and shindigs and all that, 
Um, I think Dolly's probably richer. What's it say? Dolly's got to be richer. Six hundred fifty million. Six hundred fifty million. Hmm. She does give a lot away. Mm-hmm. So does Tay Tay, though. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into that. Uh, update! Speaking of lizards and crazy shit. Well, we talked about it on this. Time. I appreciate it when people tell me you're the only news I listen to. Great. <laughs> <laughs> because you know what? You don't need to hear the rest of that shit. Nope. None of it matters. <laughs> I gave up on the real news a long time ago. I only like the weird news. Invasive, we have talked about this on this podcast, and I have said, people of the Carolinas, wake up. The Tegu lizards are coming. <laughs> Don't rest peacefully. Call Mandy Matney. My, Mandy Matney, yeah, my friend me. Adam Pick in South up. Carolina. Get the word out. Get, get, your, get your phones out, Adam. Adam. Adam's in a wheelchair, but there's no excuses, Adam. No. Get your ass outside. Drive. He can drive a car and get your phone out mm-hmm. and go get some pictures of these things. It's out of control now. <laughs> so whatever we reported on maybe a year ago, and I said, watch it. Yeah. These lizards are, they're, they're, um, creeping around. they're romantic. <laughs> and there's going to be a shit ton in no time. Romantic. Here's where they are and whether they are dangerous or not. They're the size of a dog. Yeah, this isn't some bullshit new species they found in somewhere in the jungles of Colombia. No, 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 no. This is a lizard. Imagine this. Okay. You're walking around outside somewhere in South Carolina woods, and you see a lizard the size of a dog. Uh-uh. Nope. You might mutter as you back away from the outsized creature with a distinctive black and white pattern if someone, as if someone used batik to dress it up. What's batik? B-A-T-I-C-K? P- I don't know. Chances are it was once somebody's pet. The Argentine black and white tegu. It's fabric. Oh, it's fabric. Mm-hmm. Uh, once a darling of the pet trade is now banned in South Carolina as it is now in Georgia and Florida, where it was first seen in the wild uh, in the United States. It's been spreading north ever since. Oh, my God. New York, shut your apartment doors. <laughs> <laughs> They've been spotted across South Carolina, specifically Greenville, Pickens, Darlington, Orangeberry, Bar- Berkeley, Richland, and Lexington counties. More than half are from the Columbia area. Like many non-native species threatening wildlife, native wildlife, these, these tigus are out roaming around because an owner let them go. They won't hurt you, but they are predators. They eat, eat both plants and animals. The list of what they will eat is long. Uh, eggs of ground-nesting birds, such as quail or turkeys, alligators and gopher tortoises, chicken eggs, fruits, vegetables. Well, yeah. Wow. So picture a giant iguana. That's oh. what it kind of looks like. But the size, yeah. Um, yeah, they're native to Paraguay, eastern Uruguay, and northern Argentina. And now Savannah. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, tigus are better to able to withstand cold than most lizards. They have the ability to raise their body temperature 50 degrees above the current temperature. Wow. Wow, that's a crazy thing. That's crazy. Right. Um. But there's also a big concern that they're spreading exotic parasites to native wildlife and contaminating crops. Here's how to catch one. (laughs) This is this is in an understated folksy way. uh, Rudy, Rudy told us how to catch one. You take an old sheet and just throw it out in the air, holding the ends. Okay, let it just settle down. That and that animal will just stay there until people come. It's hidden. Figures nobody sees it. It's a great way to catch an animal. I've had a lot of success. Oh That's the way of doing it. Don't just pick it up. Their bite is not venomous, but it is powerful. Okay. See? <laughs> this podcast is paying off if you're paying so, attention. So you would know if you saw one out in the wild. You would know. Um, update! Banksy. Oh. One of my favorite artists besides Basquiat. Here's the, here's the thing. So in Venice, Italy, there's a mural. Mm-hmm. And it's fading away with time. Okay. And water, because the water's hitting it. Oh. So there's a big um, controversy. Should it be restored? Okay. Well, I think we should call Banksy and ask him what he would like to do, but we don't know his phone number because we don't know his name. Right. 
So the damaged Banksy mural in Venice will be restored, defying local critics. Okay. I, th- I don't know. I mean, I guess it'd be up to him, but yeah. I think the point of his murals is they come and go. Yeah. But how am I supposed to know what his intentions are? I remember one time when I was like 25, I did all these one-nighters in San Francisco. Uh-huh. He got $75 a night, and I stayed. they told us to stay with this hippie lady. And, um, (laughs) well, because we didn't have any money. So they had this lady that like, she's an old, old hippie. And she was just nice to like comedians and singers. It was San Francisco. Like, hey, but I'm not into the hippie town. I'm not into all that. No, I'll just stay at a super eight and you fucking call room 1104 (laughs) if you need me. Not going to your hippie den, but I couldn't afford it in San Francisco. So I'm like, well, if I want to get the gigs, I got to go to the hippie land. So I went to the, she was a nice, but she was strange. Uh-huh. But she took me once. She's like, do you want to go to the art museum? The, it wasn't the Dalai Lama, but it was like the next guy, like the vice Dalai Lama. I don't know. Can you, no, have, <laughs> can you have a vice Lama? No. Yeah, he was a vice Lama. He was an important person. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it wasn't the real Dalai Lama. It was his next of uh, importance. He's a mini llama. Yeah, he's a mini llama. He's a vice llama. Oh, anyway, <laughs> these Buddhist monks in this art museum, they had sand, colored sand, in what looked like a cake topping thing. You know how you make icing? And they created this giant mural, and it was beautiful. There's all these different colors of sand and swirls, and I'm up there. Her name was Anne, the old hippie lady. And I'm up there with Anne, and she said, this is what we're here for. I'm like, right, I get it. Okay. She goes, no, you don't get what's going to happen. And I'm like, what's going to happen? Right. A Buddhist monk came flying on a rope and destroyed the whole thing. What? On purpose. And then everybody clapped. Oh. Well, Midwest, missing some synapses up here, was like, that was horrible. <laughs> I don't know why anyone's clapping. What just happened it was to show you sand and it comes and it goes and art comes and goes and there's no nothing lasts forever okay i get the point but that was a really pretty thing that they destroyed but that's their whole point we create we destroy we create we destroy so maybe that's the it's very very deep deep. when you're 25 and all you want is a beer and to get out of hippie land right and how do i make more than 75 dollars a night i don't know if I think they should ask Banksy, but you can't. So there's a mural, uh, should it be restored? Italy's cultural uh, ministry has announced it will be. Though critics close and afar remain divided over it should be allowed to naturally deteriorate. Vittorio Sagarbi, an undersecretary in Italy's culture minister, said in a statement that the restoration will be funded by an important bank. That's a little vague, Vittorio. Yeah. A press conference scheduled for today dedicated to the subject was canceled without elaboration. Um, the mural titled Migrant Child 2019 is painting along those build along the wall of a building along the Rio Nova Canal in the heart of Venice's Dosorduro district. It depicts a child holding up a flare and wearing a life vest. The mural appeared overnight between May 19, nine, uh, 2019 and it's just one of two works attributed to the British street artist in the Italian city. It's become a popular tourist attraction, but years of exposure to the damp environment has caused significant damage. A lot of the cr- critics are divided. Should we, was it, was it, if, uh, wasn't its ephemeral nature the point? Meaning, right. yeah, I don't know. Um, whether the artist is alive or dead, if he gives us permission to conduct the restoration, given that, among other things, the mural was created illegally. Oh, oh so they're going to go on that. So now it's ours. We can do whatever the hell we want. Right. I don't know. I think you got to ask him. But, like, he didn't claim it. True. So if the city wants it, then I say fix it. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Always. Court is adjourned. Thank you. Yep. Update! <laughs> I told you the world's most singular sawed-off whiskey was going up for auction. Uh-huh. 2.7 million. Wow. Boom. Now, are you going to drink it, paddles? Yes. You are? I'm going to share it with you. You're going to share it? But you spent two point. 
seven million. Whiskey. If you're spending that much yeah. on whiskey, yeah, you don't give a shit. You don't care. What would be really sad is if you got drunk and then opened it, you know, like I've, I've, <laughs> I've been known to do, where I already got drunk, and then I'm like, you know what, I got that thing from the thing. Let's wild. open that. And then I wake up in the morning and go, fuck, why did I do that? <laughs> For those who appreciate the finer tipples in life, the bottle of the world's most sought-after scotch whiskey sold for more than 2.7 Saturday at Sotheby's in London. It was a Macallan 1926. It's just one of 40 bottles drawn after aging in sherry caskets for over 60 years. It's the oldest Macallan vintage ever produced, according to the auction house. Wow, they cool. thought it would get up to 1.4, but they were in a shock when it fetched 2.7, making a new record for any bottle or spirit of wine sold at auction. Yes. I like the, Thank you, it's my auction voice. Uh, uh, the head of the sale, Sotheby's head of whiskey, Johnny Fall. How do you get that job? He's popular, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Uh-huh. He had tried a small sample. I tasted a tiny drop, a tiny drop of this. It's very rich. It's got a lot of dried fruit, as you would expect, a lot of spice and a lot of wood. He said, calling it an incredible whiskey that could not, should not be taken lightly. I like how people say things because that's what they say. Right, why would I want to drink a tree? I'm not. I'm not <laughs> into wood. Like wood. No, no, but that's no. <laughs> ever. No. no. Okay. There you go. Okay. That's what two point seven will buy you. <sighs> yep. Holy shit! They found it. The Illuminor. I'm super happy about this because I always thought this. Really? Yep. Is this a conspiracy theory? It's not a conspiracy theory at all. Okay. A lot of people. Including a lot of people in Norway. It's not just me. A lot of people in Norway. You know it's trash. A lot of people in Norway agree with me. And they're proud of it. And they keep getting trashed. <laughs> and it's not fair. Nope. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it. No. Nope. Screw Columbus. The yeah. Vikings were here first. I agree with that. By a million. Yes. A stunning discovery proves that the Vikings reached the Americas before, the Colum- before Columbus. Perfect. So, I say we quit calling it Columbus Day and call it Viking Day. And then we all get super drunk in a big town hall deal. You know, like they had those halls, a drink Viking out of, hall. Yeah, drink out of We're horns. drinking out of horns. Right. I mean, it's right up. Skull, skull. We're skulling for the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. It's Viking Day. It's all Vikings now. Researchers believe they have reliable evidence that shows the Vikings beat Christopher Columbus by 500 years. Yeah, of course they did. Yep. Tree species native to Canada, imported to Greenland, were key to the discovery. Oh. The Vikings were making regular trips to stock tree forms. Tree farms. Uh huh. A study published by the researchers of University of Iceland. Okay, maybe we're being a little. <laughs> maybe biased. maybe we're being a little biased. Um, yeah. That Norse colonists in Greenland from eight, nine, 985 to 1450 AD relied on imported timber for shipbuilding. Right. Where were they getting all the trees? Canada. Right. Mm-hmm. We still have lots. You still have a lot of trees. Mm-hmm. It also claims that elite farms had access to timber imports from Northern Europe and Northern America. That access and the timing of it all backs up Viking legends that claim there was a regular trade route between Greenland and North America about 500 years before Christopher Columbus led his famous voyage west. So you think you're all cool, Christopher, and the Queen Isabella of Spain, or whoever paid for your boat ride and your bullshit. <laughs> Old news. He was born in Italy. Christopher Columbus was Italian. Yeah, but it was, I believe... Spain paid for his trip. Yeah. They were the finance, the financiers. The, financiers. <laughs> the Norse Greenlanders had the means and knowledge and appropriate vessels to cross the Davis Strait to the east coast of North America, at least up until the 14th century. As such, journeys were being made from Greenland to North America throughout the entirety of the period of the settlement, and resources were being acquired by the Norse from North America far longer than anybody thought. Oh. Yep. Nice. So there you go. It's Viking Day in my mind. They can call it Columbus Day every year on a, on a Hallmark calendar if they want to, but I'm going to go get some Viking horns and drink out of them <laughs> and celebrate. You know who else? Dax and Heather. Dax and Heather? Yeah, they'll do it. They'll do it because they're true Vikings. Yeah, they're boys. children. I mean, they should have been cast in the thing on History Channel Vikings, yeah. especially their, their two little boys. They mm-hmm. just look like those little blonde-haired things running around some little campfire. <laughs> um, yeah. Holy shit, they found it. The lost continent of Argoland discovered between, beneath hidden jungles. 
You'd have to be Australian to know what Argo Land is. I'd never heard of it. it sounds like a thing. It's beneath the jungles in Southeast Asia. Geoscientists have long suspected that around 155 million years ago, a long piece of continent broke off from northwestern Australia and drifted away. The evidence for this is the void it left behind, a basin known as the Argo Abysmal Plain that lies deep below the ocean off the nor coast of northwestern Australia. The structure on the seafloor on the seafloor here indicates that the proposed continent named Argo Land after the abysmal plain must have drifted off to the northwest, ending up where the islands of Southeast Asia are today. And then when you see the map, mm -hmm. it all makes sense. Good. Yep. Yep. They found a whole continent. I mean, I don't even know why is this not on the news. I don't understand. It is. It's your news. Well, it's our news, yep. and it's true. And this is from a smart place. This is from... A smart place. Yeah. Yeah. These are like science things we I go to. We don't pull from yeah. dumb places. Well, sometimes I pull from dumb places. If it's a dumb story, I've so there you go. Argo Land. Go Google it. We'll put it in the notes. Okay. See if you think it's real. Oh, I, I do. Uh, let's talk about. We're moving on. Okay. First shout out. Missouri's Bucky's is opening in December. Oh. I gotta send my parents. They yeah. gotta get their asses down there. Um, if you're making your way to Branson for the Ozarks for your Christmas celebrations, you'll be able to stop at the one of the most popular filling stations. Who still says filling station except my dad? How much is uh, how much is gas at your filling station? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all he ever cares about. And then my mom always just goes, "How much is milk?" It doesn't matter where I'm working. Uh, hey, mom, where are you? Seattle. How much is milk? I don't know. I have a show tonight. <laughs> Sorry. December eleventh, it's opening in Springfield. Get down there, Ozark people. You can go for Christmas. They're also eyeing St. Louis and Kansas City. For two new locations. Oh. 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 So, way to go. Way to go. That's great. Yeah, we moved on to news. Let's talk about F1, shall we? Formula One. Um, I have a different... I got to find this other article before I go to that one. Because uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's ridiculous. The weekend, my friends that live there hated every goddamn minute of it. You know what? Shoot, I didn't bring up... Okay. I have a good article. I'll read it next week about okay. the, the mega, the, the amount of disaster. Mm -hmm. And then me and Michael were talking about it, the beer monster, Michael Somerville, the community. Like, there, it doesn't even start till like 10.30 at night, midnight, oh. because they want the Euro hours. And then they didn't cover up all the manholes and this guy's car caught on fire. That was during a practice round. But all my friends are like, they've closed all the roads. You can't get anywhere. Nobody in Vegas is happy. And they have agreed to this shit for 10 years. The article, damn, I'm so mad at myself. I was such a good article. Next week, Termites, next week. Do you want me to go get it? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Nah. As my dad would say. No, 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 no. So, you know, they had, quote, celebrities, but, like, you know who's who launched it? Donny Osmond. I'm, <laughs> what? what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? When I think Formula One, I think, get me an Osmond. <laughs> Is Jimmy, the little chubby one, still available? I always remember him from the show. Oh, my God. Um, Marie, maybe, because she's fun fun. Oh I went backstage and got to meet them once because my friend George Wallace, the comedian, used to be the show before them, and then I wanted to go see him. And then we went backstage, and Donnie was like, so do you want to get a picture? And in my head, I was like, nah, I'm good. But I didn't say that. I was like, yeah, sure. So I got my picture. Marie is a blast. She's a party in a box. Donnie kind of takes him. See, he's cute. Takes himself a little seriously. Anyway, he was like the start guy. I don't know. It's Vegas. Why not let Carrot Top do it? Somebody yes, a little yes, more yes, fun, yes, a little yes. more colorful, a little more, a little, uh, little more everything. Boys to Men. They're the show that they yeah. do the show before me in Las Vegas. I see them riding around Shania in their little go-karts backstage. Shania Twain. Yeah, she's, bad she's global. <laughs> F1 is global. Do we have any global people? Celine Dion cannot come out. How about Shania Twain? <laughs> um, but this, so they have, you know, they have all these mega parties. I can't, so I'll just do this one and then I'll do what happened okay. next week because it's just so all encompassing. This is crazy. F that. Paris Hilton appeared to be taken aback when she made her entrance at a Formula One Las Vegas Grand Prix party only to find that the room was empty, <laughs> was far from filled. 
Hilton, 42 years old, she did have a great outfit on. I did see the outfit. It, it was, was like a race car driver. Uh-huh. It was all like Swarovski crystals. I could never say that. Super she cool. arrived at the DJ for a DJ set at the Virgin Hotel in Las Vegas when she looked around at a half empty dance floor. And then people were posting the priceless moment when Paris Hilton realizes there's no one at the F1 after party. Uh, she still did it. She was dressed in a bedazzled racing jumpsuit, was seen lifting her sunglasses to scan the half empty tables of fans, cheering as another DJ announced her. So she gets, she still gets paid. Yeah. I mean, you're getting your appearance fee. Um, the panic set in the minute she lifted those sunglasses, and then somebody else wrote, My agent is so fired. Another joke <laughs> totally. was saying, Ouch, all of the oops, uh, host and marketing's are, uh, marketing agents are fired. Security holding back a whole lot of nobody. Ooh, right. She came in late and was still early. Ah! <laughs> Somebody wrote that. She pulled up to bingo night like, what the fuck? Um, just, I, I'll save the article for next week. We'll move on from that subject because it's too good to let go. And That's it's my so fault funny. that I thought I printed that out and I didn't. Okay. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of uh, good stuff. Okay, this is one of my favorite ones of the week. Gen Z, the Zoomers. Now, there's a lot of good Gen Gen Zers. I think they are ages 11 through 26. People always say, you didn't know what a millennial is. Yes, I do. Uh I am Gen X. I'm the old end of Gen. I'm an elder Gen Xer. Um, Gen Z. It's like 11 through 26, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Millennials are 27 to 42. 27 to 42. That's why when I say in my special on Amazon, the guy was like 35. So he's like, that's not a millennial. Yeah, it is. Right. You're just getting old and you're not keeping track. I Google this shit all the time because I don't want to insult a whole group if I'm going to do a joke about them. Right. I need it to be right. Gen Z workers say they should be hired for their personality, not productivity, because we set the vibes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I love them. <laughs> it's so ballsy. <laughs> They're so, yeah. the guts on this group. I won't do it. <laughs> They're personally personality hire is the humus witty mood booster who delivers the fun factor in the office oh my God. Wow. forget the resume gen z thinks you should hire them for their personalities according to the youngest generation in the workforce their humor and wit provides a certain vibrance older employees apparently lack that's funny grandpa you're crabby <laughs> that's what they're saying papa you're sleepy and crabby <laughs> get on board <laughs> they even invented a term personality hire to describe their self-perceived function in a corporate setting to bribe, provide you all the jokes, banter and, play, banter and playfulness you need in order to, quote, set the vibes. Wow. Now, not all young people are like this. No. But there are some, and I have met some. It's kind of funny. I will not even tell you. So I, I may have sold this story because I, I do tell it a lot. It's not a joke. Uh-huh. Um, somebody that w- works with me, uh-huh. they hired a 20-something, mm-hmm. and the kid came in, my friend's office, who's like 50, yep. and said, yeah, so I'm going to need a Vera desk. Uh-huh. Okay, those are like five to 10 grand. <laughs> and my friend said, do you see that man over there? Mm-hmm. He's 55 years old. He's the head of this entire operation. Mm-hmm. He just got a Vera desk. <laughs> You're not getting one. Uh-huh. Ghost, I, I mean, at that age, I just sat on a milk crate all day <laughs> and not said a fucking word. Five no, they hour. just walk right in. I'm gonna, I have back pain. Why do you have back pain when you're 20? Do you have a medical note for this? Because I don't believe you. You just want to work out while you're at work. I know what's going on here. You want to be on a treadmill, blah, blah, blah. Well, they said no, and the kid quit. What? Yep. Oh, my God. Yep. My friends that have real jobs, they're like, some of the 20-somethings, they get hired, and then they just never come. Oh, my God. Yep. TikToker and corporate America employee Bella Rose Mortal, a 22-year-old self-proclaimed chief vibes officer, told Business Insider that her previous managers have appreciated her energy, calling it the nicest compliment she's received. <laughs> After her series of TikToks calling for unserious, an unserious workplace, I do uh, like that. Yes. I'm with you on that, Gen Z. And the integration of Gen Z lingo into the office par- parlance went viral she said her manager at the software company, Beehive, found the videos hilarious. In a team call, he was like, before we get started, Bella Rose, do you want to set the vibes for our call today? Oh, my God. I would love that. It's, their mission is to lighten things up, not lighten someone else's workload. <laughs> 
That's it. You kids keep pushing the envelope, and then we'll finally get back to where it should have been instead of all this bullshit we had to go through. Oh, my God. Um, uh, do you want to do it? you have 500 bucks? No. Well, yeah, I do. Pay it all, so you have 500 dollars. Yeah. Well, you can buy Frontiers 2024 All-You-Can-Fly Go Wild Pass. Oh, my God. Just prepared for a list of limitations. <laughs> sure. My friend Michael Palasek will sign right up for this. And then it, it'll work for him. Yep. He's like, he just has a vibe about him that, he yeah, I hired the pass. And then I flew like 87 flights. So and I'm like, cool. what time were the flights? Like two in the morning? Um, it's an all you can fly. Go wild pass for 2024. It lets the pass holders book an unlimited number of frontier flights for 0.1 cent per trip. Limitations into two months of blackout dates and a tight booking period that opens 24 hours before the flight. This would be great if you're retired. And you want to go to Cabo right now. Or if you, if you just have an open calendar. Rich right. people aren't going to do it because they're not flying Frontier for mm-hmm. on this kind of system. No. But if you're retired or a college kid that had the extra $500, I would totally do it. Because <laughs> you can go whenever. Right. Great. Calling all spontaneous travelers. Before you scramble to buy one, you should know there's five print. Of course they Of course they find. Uh, right. Of course they find print. Um, It's still selling a 299 fall to winter pass and a monthly option at $99 for the first month and 149 Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, to avoid an early booking fee, seats must be reserved as early as a day before a domestic flight or 10 days before the international trip. Uh, the earlier a pass holder books, the better. There's a lim- limited number of first, cur- first come, first serve, go wild seats. So how many are on every flight? Yeah. You know what I would do if I was Frontier. And I think you could get away with this. I don't think it would piss anybody off. Mm-hmm. So every flight you had, yeah. let's say you uh, allowed three go wild, so an aisle, three go wild flights. I would say I'd make it a thing on the plane and make the flight attendant say it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go wild! <laughs> and then <laughs> here's our go wild people. Yeah. Paddles, Michael Palsack, Michael Summerfield, please stand up and wave. Tell the people how much you're flying for. And then everybody, you might get mad. You're like, my ticket costs $484. Yeah, that'd be a riot. The, well, no, you can't get mad. Yeah. You didn't follow the instructions. <laughs> Do you want to go wild pass? I would introduce them on every flight. Here, I think 27B. it'd be. 27B. Right. Well, so what? Mm-hmm. Who cares? Um, their stipulations can be extremely frustrating for those who can't travel spontaneously. Right. We need retirees and college kids. Um, or even high school kids, if your parents will let you go. Why not? True. Hey, I know Thanksgiving is awesome, but I just booked a trip to Cabo. <laughs> See ya. Gotta go. This is crazy. I can't wait to hear what happens. The rarest baseball card ever may break, may break world record, record au- at auction. One of the rarest and most revered baseball cards in the world is headed up for auction where it may fetch a record-breaking sum. The premier auction house, such and such. It's a 1914 Baltimore News Babe Ruth rookie card. Mm-hmm. There's only 10 in existence. 10? 10. It's the first ever to feature the great Bambino, uh, who was just 19 years old at the start of his career. He was even large then. Yeah. Yeah. I always liked him because he played drunk mm-hmm. and hung over, and he was still great. <laughs> He's like the John Daly of his time. He totally is. Uh, although the card was issued in both blue and red variations, the one going up for auction features a red and white image of the legendary pitcher Framed by a red border. Now, this is something I could see spending money on. Okay. Well, if I had crazy money. Instead of some of the stuff we talk about that goes up for auction, where you're like, what are you going to do with it? Right. At least this you could frame and look in your house. Well, I don't know. Then you got to get security, though, because somebody's going to come steal it. Bingo. I know. Maybe it should be in a museum. Uh-huh. Maybe it should be in Cooperstown. It should be in, yes, it should be in Cooperstown. Right. Yeah. It's just going to be in some rich guy's house. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. It remained in the same Baltimore area family for more than 100 years. Wow. That's where it's been. From 1988 until early this year, it was also the sole example of this card housed at the Babe Ruth Birthplace and Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. I don't know why Lewis isn't bright. Well, Lewis is Silver Spring, Maryland, yeah. but I'm shocked he hasn't bragged a lot that Babe Ruth is from Maryland. He likes yeah. to brag about he his... He likes to round. He, yeah, and he doesn't brag about his other person from Baltimore. I told him he, he threw out the pitch... Joan Jett. Exactly. Right. So cool. I'm like, so far, Lou, I'm doing celebrities from Baltimore area. <laughs> and it's you and Joan Jett. Yep. 
Who else you got, Lou? Um, here's a little something interesting. You know your blue, everybody's jeans? You know how there's that little tiny pocket inside the pocket, usually on the right side? No, we're talking about blue jeans. Okay. We're moving on from the Babe Ruth card. Oh, okay. I'm actually pretty on track this week. Okay. <laughs> for myself, for me and my... Jeans to you are clothing. Jeans to me is genetics. Jeans science. God, whose brain works like that? Oh, battles. You need to free your brain of hard things I'm like writing, that. Pockets, People are gobsmacked after learning what the tiny pockets in jeans are actually for. Oh, okay, Wh- what do you think it's for? Thumbs. You Put your thumbs in. You think you, you think it's for your thumbs? Yeah. To yeah. just stick them in there. Yeah, if you're like a cowboy. You're if you're a dancing. cowboy, yeah, you're you want. Dancing. Why wouldn't you just put your thumbs in the pocket? Why are they in the tiny pocket? If you're line dancing, why are your arms not moving? <laughs> I never, I don't wine dance. You haven't thought through any of this. Okay. They I, say I, people are gobsmacked after learning what it's for. I'm not gobsmacked. No. That's a ridiculous word for my reaction to this. Okay. The tiny, tiny pocket. Hold on. <sighs> Hold on. I'm just getting to the part. I know what, I already know what it's for. Um. So. The tiny pockets date back to the 19th century. They were stitched into Levi's waist overall jeans, the original name for the classic blue denim trousers, and were made big, made just big enough to store a, a pocket watch. A pocket watch. Oh. Pocket watch in the back. Fat thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Your thumb theory is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> just saying. I thought it was for a lighter, but that's from somebody who smoked oh, my whole yeah. life. Yeah, you never get that out. No, my dad would think that. That's what the tiny windows were for in cars, smokers' windows. Most people don't know that. No, I do know that. There were a lot of secret smoker shouts out back in the day, and I thought they were giving us a secret shout out in jeans going, here's a little something for no. your light up. <laughs> nope, pocket watch. The design was made in 1873. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. First distributed in 1890 with the lot 501 jeans, which is what 501 jeans were based on. So if you buy 501 jeans, that's why you got that. Uh-huh. See? Don't say you're not learning stuff here, Termites. No. We're learning. Now, every time you do that, you're going to have But I also think, that's a tiny pocket watch. I'll have to go look at my pocket. Yeah. Yeah, it seems tiny. Um, we're going to save that. Um, oh, okay. All right. Now, this is for the Catholics out there. Okay. Yeah. The Shit. Pope fired a bishop, too, who was, who was trash-talking him. Ah, I love it. Sometimes the bishops over here in the United States, I think, forget that Rome has um, Twitter. Yeah, I think you're forgetting the big guy can see your shit. Uh Oh, he was bashing them and crazy. And there's never been a pope as liberal, and I know he's still not liberal to what some a lot of people want. Uh Oh, then my parents were friends with somebody who said they they wrote a letter they want that pope gone because he's. He's not liberal enough. Well, I mean, I don't know what you want the guy to do in a certain amount of time. He right. can't change the whole religion. He's doing no. it bit by bit. Um, he's a Jesuit. I, I like him as far yeah. as popes go. I mean, is he my idea of who I'm going drinking with? Actually, maybe. This pope, maybe. Let me find mm-hmm. him a beer with. Mm-hmm. Not he also seems very happy. Yeah. Unlike the pope that's still alive, the German guy. Right. Yeah, he had beady eyes. Benedict. He was a really good. I didn't like that movie. pope. Yeah, that was a great comments. movie, The Two Popes. Yeah. I think it was called The Two Popes with um, that guy from Jurassic Park, Sam Neill, yep. played one pope. Oh, I forgot to do that, too, what we're watching. We'll do that before we go. Um, a statue of the Virgin Mary has been captured crying tears, prompting hundreds to, witness, to travel to witness a miracle. The statue residing in the church of the town El Canal, Colima, was recorded showing what looks like tears seeping out of the Virgin Mary's eyes. Hundreds have flocked to the church to witness the inexplicable miracle take place. Video capturing the phenomenon of circulated on social media, showing small drops of water falling from the statue's eyes and cascading down her face. Some witnesses believe the Mary, Virgin Mary tears are real, as the redness around her eyes indicates she's been crying. Similarly, when we cry, our eyes become red, said, and the same happens to the image, a local resident, Victor, said, according to an outlet. 
So a couple of tears started flowing, this event, the phenomenon that is happening here in this church. He says he also thinks he knows why she's crying. Yeah, we can associate it. The violence rates that are being experienced here in the state of Colima, also here in the community. Colima has been labeled the most dangerous city in Mexico and has held that ranking for six years. Mm. Oh. Yeah, maybe that's why she's crying. Yeah. Do I believe it? Yes, I do. Yes, absolutely. Yes, I do. Yep. I, I think these things can happen. And people will go on and on about the paint. You know, I've read all the other, the sci- here's a scientific explanation. Well, when it gets too hot, blah, blah, blah. well, then it would happen all the time. Right. Yeah, you can't, I don't, yeah. I need a better explanation. If she's not really crying, right. what is she doing? And don't tell me it's the paint. I don't believe it. There you go. Um, I would go. There are some people that don't believe it. You need a holler sta- you need a holler hollow statue made of plaster ceramic which must be covered on the outside by a waterproof layer. By filling the statue with water through an um, uh, hole at the top, the porous material will absorb it and the outer layer will prevent it from coming out. However, sl- if a slight scratch is made in the productive glaze in the tear duct, well who would do that? Right. Who's going to go up and just maybe right. if you're trying to raise money or some shit. Uh, the absorbed water will come out as tears. Many other statues have appeared been weeping and been reported in the past. Da, 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 da. Yep, I believe it. So if you want to get down there, it's Colima. Doesn't sound very safe, though, right now. <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so what are we watching before we go, since I missed that segment? Um, the crown has started. Yay, right. yay, yes. yay. I'm through one. Uh, I'm through three. Oh. Or maybe four, right when the car accident happens. Oh. Uh. Right. Um, so I didn't realize she hadn't dated Dodie that for that long, but there's also like a lot of made up scenes and conversations and no one would know if those things really happened. Right. I prefer we stick more to the facts we know than the dramatization. Yeah. Right. And the guy who plays Charles is better looking than Charles. So I don't really buy it. Oh, yeah. Um, I love the old guy that plays Philip cause he's the guy from game of Thrones and he's just wonderful, a wonderful and who's ever played the Queens doing a great job. And the lady who's playing Diana, it's in great. Who is that? She's famous. Kristen somebody. I don't know. It's amazing how much she looks like Diana. Jonathan Price plays, plays Philip. Yep. Who's playing Diana? So much good men. Get on it, Paddles. Earn your keep. Elizabeth Debicki. Elizabeth Debicki. Well, she looks just like her. I thought it was someone she's named. She's an Aussie. She's an Aussie. Now I'm going to be listening for that accent. Yeah, she was wow. a great Gatsby in Man of Mule Man. Um, and the kids, everybody's good. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's a well done. Um, Harry's cuter. The little kid that's playing Harry, I think, is cuter than actual Harry. Mm-hmm. And Philip, uh, William, I'd say trade off same. Yep. But I shouldn't be sitting here judging what children look like. That's a just evil, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> and the Gilded Age, I haven't seen my latest episode, but it better pick up. It doesn't pick up. Um. And other than that, I've only been watching football and how's nothing. Your fa- how's your fantasy team? My fantasy team's doing great. Besides, in the one in the children's leagues, I'm just destroying hopes and dreams left and right. These children are going to hate me at Thanksgiving, and I can't wait to talk to all of them <laughs> about their dumbass trades. Some of them aren't paying enough attention. No. I'm like, are you a gambler or not? Right. You left two people that were on injured reserve out on your field. <laughs> so how can they play if they're on injured reserve? They're they can't. No. Yeah, you're not paying enough attention. You don't have the attic gene. You're out. This isn't like a, this isn't a silly endeavor. No. This is gambling. Sadly, we're going to, we're going to close up with a happy story though. Yay. It's happy, but sad. Rosalind Carter died. Oh, so sad. Yeah. Um, and here's just a few things about Jimmy Carter put out a big statement. It was very sad. Um, she just went into hospice two days ago and then died. No, he was, and then she would just hang out there, I think, and you know, that, I don't I think she had dementia, too. Um, just a little few things about um, since she's passed away. Um, she was born January, uh, wait, hold on, uh, uh, born August 18th, 1927. She died November 19th, 2023. She was an American writer and activist who served as the First Lady of the President of the United States from 77 to 81. She was in public service for decades, leading advocate of numerous causes, including mental health. Mm-hmm. She was also born and uh, raised in Plains, Georgia. Graduated as a salutar- salutorian. That's why I never was one. Salutatorian. Salutatorian. Yep. Salute me. 
Isn't that second place? Isn't valedictorian first place? The vice torian. The vice torian. <laughs> I am the vice torian. She went to Georgia Southwestern College and graduated in 1946. A lot of women that age did not go back to college from. So good for her. She first became attracted to her husband, Jimmy, after seeing a picture of him in his Annapolis uniform. And they married in 1946. Mm -hmm. She helped him win the governorship. And then she helped him win the presidency, defeating incumbent Republican Gerald Ford. Um, she, uh, they had uh, four kids. Jack, James III, Donald, and Amy Carter, who the young, the young um, termites won't remember, but it was really brutal because Amy Carter, the other kids are way older. They're like 10 years older, so they were gone out of the house by the time Jimmy and Rosalind become... It become no by the time they're in the White House. Oh yeah, Amy's like ten, mm -hmm. and she wasn't. Let's just say, the cutest kid running around. But who is right? But the press made so much fun of her, and I'm oh. like, God damn, she's ten. Yeah. Leave her alone, you know. And then I saw a picture of her as an adult. She looks like Sissy Spacek. It's crazy. Cute. Yeah, very cute. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. She's very quiet though. She just does the Carter Institution and all that stuff. She's not like a public person. Mm -hmm. Her father, Rosalind's dad, died of leukemia when she was 13. She called the loss of her father at the conclusion of her childhood. She then helped raise her younger siblings as well as assisted in the dressmaking business in order to meet the family's obligations. Um, yeah, so she had a very nice life. Um, she really liked the mental illness field, so good for her because she said it was, a, it was nobody talked about it back then, which they did not. Um, and she was for ERA, big ERA lady, and there you go. That's great. So, a very nice life. I'm sure Jimmy's not far behind now. Um, we got to wait for each other. Yeah, he'll show, show hang around and wait for him, I'm sure. So, okay, termites. That's what we have for this week. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? What am I doing? I'm going over to um, my brother and sister-in-law's house, nice. and there will be 27 people. Wow. Yep. Yeah. They asked what I was bringing, and I said, sail bin mini bottle liquor bottles <laughs> i'm gonna go to the sale bin thing no i um i didn't i don't have time to cook i just got back i don't have time so i ordered a bunch of sides and stuff nice. very standard run-of-the-mill mac and cheese because here's what's gonna happen i really like my sister-in-law amy but she does have a tendency to make things weird like food wise, food -wise. Mm -hmm. yeah like there'll be a salad yeah and then all of a sudden, you'll just eat, like, a goat hoof. And you're like, what the fuck was that? Oh, darling, those are hooves of goats. What? Amy, what? It's just supposed to be a salad. I remember one time my dad, it was a quinoa salad, uh -huh. right? And he goes, what's that shit? I go, salad, Dad. Salad. Bullshit. That is not her. He goes, is that where we're having that? I'm going to have to pre-eat. I'm going to have to have your mother cook our Thanksgiving. Pre-eating. Yeah, because, like, if they're, and I agree with him. I don't want raisins in the dressing. No. I don't want weird shit. No. Thanksgiving's supposed to be boom, boom, boom. White bread, sage. White bread, mm -hmm. sage, sausage, mm -hmm. pork, sausage, mm -hmm. not, you Dirty. know. Oh, it's a deer meat dressing. Oh, stop <laughs> it. Stop <laughs> it. Stop <laughs> it. It's a cilantro turkey. Have you ever had? Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but the football's going to be on. Oh, and Dolly Parton's performing at the halftime. I think, so is great. it the Dallas game? Dallas game. Am I sure of that? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess she's going to do something from Rockstar. I don't really know what's Some happening. Oh, I forgot I forgot my uh, quotes. What? Some of your termites are going to the game. Some of the termites are going to the game? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Yep. How fun would that be? That'd be a fun little Thanksgiving. Okay, here's a quote from Taylor. We're checking out on this. Fearless is not the absence of fear. It's not completely being unafraid. To me, fearless is living in spite of those things that scare you to death. Fearless is getting back up and fighting for what you want over and over again, even though every time you've tried before you've lost. See, I'm a walk away -er. <laughs> This is where I go, eh, you know, when, when it's at the sound of music. Oh, when the Lord uh, closes, closes a window, the he opens a door. Right. So if a window gets closed on me, I'm like, well, that's fucked. Where's the door? <laughs> I move on. I move on. And I just assume that was a message straight from Jesus. Bye-bye. Kathleen, I mean, how many times are you going to try? That's how I felt about Tim Tebow. 
the, the, the athlete. Yeah. You are not listening to Jesus. Right. He's told you you can't play Major League Baseball. He's told you a hundred times. He told you you can't play Major League Football. Listen to him. Yep. But good for Tay-Tay. She's a billionaire. She's a billionaire. And I'm not. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, well, how much do they want for that? Boat insurance? <laughs> <laughs> and a quote from Dolly, random, open. This is a famous Dollyism posted to Dolly on her Twitter page in November 2010. I'm not going to limit myself just because people won't accept the fact that I can do something else. There you go. She's got 640 million. She has 640 million. These are two women we should yeah, listen to. Exactly. Do not listen to the Kathleen Madigan walk away <laughs> version. When you try something and fail, I say, move on, motherfuckers. Uh, these two say, stay at it. Keep doing it. Try. Try and try again. They are much richer than I will ever be. So, you there are you beloved, go. though. Beloved. <laughs> I do have a lot of fun. I don't think I'd have a, as much fun if I had Dolly's work schedule or Tay Tay's work schedule. No. I'm not cut out for it. No. You cannot give an Irish person an, an, enough money. Because once we have enough, we're good. Yeah. I don't want, I don't care enough. Right. Just want enough to, you know, go golfing, fishing, hang out. You like your shows, though. They're fun. No, I like my shows and stuff. I like what I do for a living. I'm just saying, there was somebody had a really funny joke in Ireland one time, but I can't say it because the word is now banned. But um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <there you> <laughs> it's when the Irish had a big influx in money back in the day. It was like the 2000s or something. And and it was an Irish person who said the joke, and he's like, we don't know what to do with ourselves having this kind of money. It's like giving a razor to someone who's mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if any offense is taken, I didn't write it. I'm just repeating it. It made me laugh because they just weren't used to having money, and then, oh. boom, the, whatever happened, I forget, in the economy, and they had all kinds of money there for a hot run. I think it had something to do with the euro. doesn't even matter. Have a great Thanksgiving, termites. Enjoy the football Oh, I forgot my schedule. Where am I going? I'm going right after that next week. Eugene, Portland, Seattle, the villages, Wichita, Tulsa. This is 2000. The next year is Wichita, Tulsa, Santa Rosa, Wheatland. Those are rebookings. Um, San Luis Obispo, Monterey, Birmingham. That's going to be fun. Birmingham, Alabama. Atlanta. I love Atlanta. It's too far to drive. I don't like the traffic in Atlanta, but I like everything about uh, else about Atlanta. But I told my friend George Wallace, who lives in Atlanta, if I've been in traffic for over an hour and a half, I should be somewhere other than Atlanta because right. that's where I started, in Atlanta, and right. I'm still in goddamn Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it can be something. Scottsdale, Arizona. Talking stick. I love it. Chattanooga. Sticker. <laughs> Huntsville, Alabama. Love it there, too. Royal Oak. Two nights. Detroit. Friday and Saturday. Saturday's almost sold out. Friday, we're, there's stuff available. Dayton, Ohio. Indianapolis. San Antonio. Austin, Marietta, Cincinnati, Terrytown, New York, Wilmington, Delaware, and Thousand Oaks. And then there's a lot more, but they just haven't been officially on sale. No. Nope. They're not. And I can't say stuff until the venues say it. Well, or secret shows now. Well, right. Then they get mad because people start calling. I understand it. They don't want to deal with that. Nope. They're like, don't say a flipping word. No. All right, termites. Where's my lawn? Thanksgiving wish is that all of my bets that I place before I the games happen that I win. Nice. Is that shallow? DraftKings. DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> it gives a whole new meaning to the afternoon. Yes, it does. Right? right? When you used to sit there and have to watch Detroit lose. Yeah. And now Detroit is good. So good. Dallas is looking better. Mm -hmm. In spite of Jerry Jones. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> bullheaded, blockheaded thing. And if you don't like Jerry Jones, I got news for you. His son looks just like him, and he has a son that looks just like that. They're like mm -hmm. Russian, those dolls, those Russian egg dolls. There's a million of them, and they all look just like Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. He's not going away anytime soon. No. And when he does, there's going to be another one that looks exactly like him popping up. <laughs> well, I think here's what I think the dog, right? well, down, we got we got a fighting chance. We're going to actually the best quarterback. Ever. Mm -hmm. All right. 